Yeah, welcome to Motor City FurCon 2014, the beautiful town of Novi, Michigan. No beep. Boop. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good. Uh, since she became part human. Very hardcore. Yeah. Well, no, she was actually human at the end, but she was human. And who are you going to call? Someone else. All right.
Nosebeep. Did you get a nosebeep? Free beer? Where? In the sponsor's line? Oh, I can't afford that oh, shit. You're going to make me work for it, huh? He wants a nosebeep. Nosebeep. Oh, no. oh. There we go. All right. You don't like Jettles? How do you join Border City Puricon? Uh, Aww. Aww. She's not real She's not the best. He's just an inspector. Oh, okay. oh. Mm. He's off duty. This is oh, crash. That's no that's why he's he's got it on button. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffs crash for coke. <laughs> he's a drug sniffer. <laughs> like uh, day two of Motor City Furry Con. As you can see, we're still under construction. This morning, this gallon jug of maple syrup in his hand. I said, "Do you have a stereotype?" So we're telling he lost his head, eh? Why get a mic? How much space do I have? I do traditionally move around a lot on stage. I don't think I'll be doing it today, though, because my back really hurts. God, it sucks getting old. Don't ever get old. <laughs> they call this convention war stories. Thing is, some of you probably already know half of these because I recognize your faces. You've been in this panel before. <laughs> and some of you might have been part of those stories. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Like one I just heard. I'm always the last one to know. That's the thing that bothers me. If you don't know who I am, I'm the chairman of Anthrocon. We're the, the largest furry convention in the world right now. And uh, pretty much if it's happened at a con, it's happened at my con. And as I said, I'm oh hi, oh, I get a chair. That's why I am chairman. <laughs> Where's the mind lab? Uh, Stand in until you get fun. It's morning! What kind of a lush do you think I am? A good one, yes. <laughs> I was just talking to a, a young fellow uh, earlier on. You know, pleasant, happy conversation. And he just happened to slip into the conversation. Oh, I, I got elbowed in the face by a, a fursuiter at your convention and knocked one of my teeth out. I'm like, what? Uh, is it here? I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Anthrocon has a long and rich history of uh, interesting stories that never get told, including to me. <laughs> because I have the Dorsai regulars working security, they're working security here too, fantastic crew. They have been doing security at conventions since before most of you were born. 1977, I think, was when they were officially put together. They started out as the Klingon Diplomatic Corps. They worked security at the world's first Star Trek convention in New York. Now, I really wish Renegade was here right now because he's really good at telling this story. The Dorsai have a, their own tradition. My stories usually begin with, <clears throat> let me tell you a story. The Dorsai tradition, their stories start with, no shit, there I was. <laughs> <laughs> The world's first Star Trek convention was held in New York City, and the idea was that they would sell tickets through Ticketmaster or Ticket... I think they call it Ticketron back then. It's one of these, you know, ticketing outfits. They expected, if I remember the story correctly, about 600 people. When they hit 600, Ticketron called up the chairperson and said, what should we do? And she told them, just keep selling. So at a hotel approximately the size of this one, some 3,000 people showed up. <laughs> lined up outside the door, getting very, very rowdy. And the only things standing between the mob and this 
tiny little convention inside, trying their best. You know, let one person in each time a person goes out. That sort of thing. Where two young science fiction fans wearing old-time Klingon makeup and toe socks. I don't know why they were wearing toe socks. <laughs> However, the crowd began to get extremely ugly because they had paid money to be told, you can come in, you'll get to meet DeForest Kelly and you know, William Shatner and all these people. And now they're being told, well, you're going to have to stand out there for who knows how many hours and you might not even get in. It was an unruly mob. And I believe it was, uh, it was Steve Simmons. That's why I wish Renegade was here. He can give you the full details. Uh, was at the top of the escalator when the mob started to surge forward. And basically, it's like the barbarians storming the gates of the castle. They came up. And he said, you know, you can't go past this point. I'm sorry, you're going to have to stop. And they shouted in unison, who the hell are you? And he said, I'm a Klingon wearing toe socks. <laughs> <laughs> and it stopped. Because <laughs> they kind of went, uh... Okay. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> At the close of the convention, they managed to mostly get folk in for 10 seconds or so, then you gotta get out. At the end of the convention, the hotel manager came up to the Klingon diplomatic corps and said, here's the bill. And they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what do you talk? What bill? And he said, the bill for the hotel, the catering, the guest room. Here's your bill. Pay up. And they said, it's not our bill. What are you talking about? It's, it, we, we just, we're just Klingons. I mean, <laughs> you have to give this to the chairman. And they were told, she checked out this morning. Oh. And was not seen again after getting on a plane to Mexico. <laughs> That's never happened to me. <laughs> Although, believe me, it's been a temptation. <laughs> but I couldn't do that to all of you. Yeah, I could, in a heartbeat, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, the only problem is those same uh, uh, gentlemen who were the Klingon diplomatic corps are now the Dorsai Irregulars. Uh, you, have you all seen Renegade? He's the little, little, you know, Santa Clausy looking man, very, very charming, Cajun accent, twinkle in his eye. You know, he, he just looks so roly poly and cuddly. The man is an ex airborne ranger with three tours of duty in Vietnam. Do not fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. It's a general rule of thumb not to mess with anybody wearing a beret. Yes. <laughs> you see, they're allowed to wear berets. Uh, Rennie tells a story. Uh, he was uh, working a con, I think in uh, Chicago, and this was some years ago. He was uh, out in the streets, he had gone out to get some dinner or something, and when uh, he was on his way back, from out of an alley jumped a, a skinny young man who uh, wanted uh, Renegade to hand over his wallet. And Renegade's comment was, Kid, you're not made for this line of work. <laughs> so the kid took a, a slash at him, found himself face first into the dumpster held against it, and Renegade simply took the knife away and said, I'm going to tell you again, kid, you need to find another line of work, and went and gave the knife to the nearest police officer he'd find. I've also never had to deal with that at Amphicon. As far as I know, because the door side don't tell me anything. Here's where that long-standing tradition comes in. I'll go into ops. Oh, hey, Renegade. Hi, guys. How are you? And we'll sit down, and we'll be talking about stuff. And, you know, at some point in the conversation, Renny will turn to one of the guys and say, Hey, you remember that naked guy at Entricon that was high on speed and was running through the lobby and we had to tackle him and he started biting people? And I'll say... Wait, 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 wait,
was 2011. No, 2012. It was 2012. <laughs> Why didn't I know about it? <laughs> Randy just smiles with that little Cajun twinkle and says, we took care of it. <laughs> I said, but you could have told me. And with that same smile, he just says, it just would have upset you. <laughs> but he's right. I kind of want to know, but I'm happier that I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stress running a convention. Anybody who has run a convention, you can ask. Look what it does to them. Do you see that man? That man is 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> this is a major undertaking. It's not, oh, you just get a hotel and a convention happens. The amount of work that goes into it and the amount of things that go wrong. Believe me, furries are our own worst enemy. <laughs> there are some things that I have seen, usually in the form of a convention center manager standing over in the corner looking at me doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yes? How are you? <clears throat> that depends. <laughs> Can I have a word with you? <laughs> it's like being taken to the principal's office. <laughs> Usually, I go into the office like this. And I come out like this. <laughs> this is the chairman fingers. I call this the chairman fingers. They go here. Um, we all have them. Sven, take it off. The uh, chairman of Eurofurns, his are this way. He does this. Um, Ger, you should, I think, also, also do it here. Uh, wait, where do you put yours? Your chairman fingers. Are yours up here? It's not polite to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's Alkali. He runs Midwest Fur Fest or something like that. <laughs> Whatever that thing is called. First square. What? Duncan and Scott are going to kill me if they hear that. Oh, right. First square. <laughs> There's so many concepts. Back in my day, there was only three conventions. God damn it, that was enough for anybody. <laughs> you cannot sling a dead cat without hitting a furry con around here now. <laughs> it's true. Oh, somebody's going to get me under my cat died two weeks ago and you've upset me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really hate to say it, but it's a really tough world out there. If your sensibilities are so tender and frail that a slight off-color comment is going to hurt you, you're never going to make it out there. You need to grow up while you still can. <laughs> Back to war stories. Um, see, most of you have heard my war stories, and I've talked about other conventions' war stories. What happened to your con this year, Alkali, that you haven't told anyone yet? <laughs> I don't know. Yes? <laughs> you sons of bitches. <laughs> These are the deep, dark secrets that we take with us afterward. People come up and they say, that was a great con, and we say, yes, thank you. <laughs> so, what happened that made you do the chairman fingers? You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, when I thought about running a con, I got a wonderful email from this gentleman who said, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that was all he sent to me. <laughs> I was asking for advice. I've gotten a lot of advice since then, and nothing was better than that email. <laughs> Because you guys showed up on Thursday to my con, and it was awesome. I was so thrilled to see how many people showed up early. And they had a rave in the basement. <laughs> you organized? Organized a rave? Just look at me! <laughs> I organized desserts and food and shit. I don't organize a rave. I go downstairs to where our video game, board game, and all that is, and in the hallway, there are... Fifteen fursuiters, more than I knew were at the event, a boombox and a flashlight that somebody's just putting their hand on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I had to go upstairs to see if you could hear them and you couldn't. And I was really impressed. I was really responsible. I was super. I was really, really excited that they could do this. 
and then they started moving. <laughs> Did you know that raves are mobile? <laughs> the lobby of the hotel does now. <laughs> and God bless them. The next morning I woke up and I go talk to my uh, liaison for the hotel. Like, anything happened last night that I need to know about? No, no. There was a rave in the lobby. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're gonna get another one. Right. Because that can't be the only thing that went wrong. I remember one of Amphicon's early years, the Hilton Valley Forge Hotel in Pennsylvania. Uh, they had just put down a brand new million dollar marble floor in the lobby. Oh. And it was for that reason that the zoo came into being, because the manager came to me and was like, it's a brand new floor, we're very proud of it, it was very expensive, you know, how do I keep too many people from like walking on it? And I said, dude, it's a floor, it's made to be walked on. He said, yes, but it's new. It's like a new car, you don't want to drive it, you just want to look at it. <laughs> so he gave us a restaurant in the hotel, closed the restaurant, gave it to us, that became the zoo and a tradition ever since. So the lobby was kept mostly clear, and I was sitting in the lobby doing the chairman fingers, <laughs> like this, and I heard a sound. You ever seen those commercials with the Budweiser Clydesdales? You know the sound they make? There was a fursuiter named White Horse. Oh. And steel horseshoes. Oh. He came by. In the lobby, and I just, I just. <laughs> I just, I just went upstairs. I just. Went upstairs. <laughs> Oh, any damage to your hotel? Clip clop, clip clop, yes. clip clop, <laughs> scratch. Uh, I didn't. I didn't stay for that part. I just. I just I'm, I'm going upstairs. I'm going upstairs. See, in those days, that was when I thought I could be chairman and run operations. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't even claim to be chairman at my own town anymore. <laughs> That's because it makes you a target. What is this? Yeah, it's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to continue to say that. <laughs> the damage to my hotel? Yeah. I wouldn't call it damage. <laughs> I got taken up to the third floor by uh, uh, the hotel's, uh, um, their night manager, because there was a problem. Okay, when is the night manager? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the night manager me got along very well. She was actually a, uh, a, a super nerd, uh, had seen me before at Gen Con for the other event that I run, so knew exactly who I was and gave me a smile. Very funny. It was perfect. This one, right? Yep. Yeah, remember this one? Yeah. Pointed at the elevator. 